Jodie's real job is as the director of a library. She quit her well-paid position as a civil servant for this more flexible job, so she could devote more time to her volunteer activities. She enjoys this work since it gives her a chance to speak with young people. Jodi lives in Mumbai, India's capital of commerce and industry. The economic growth in recent years has led to some liberalization. Now about 20% of the women in Mumbai are educated and hold jobs. But that's still half the level of men. The government makes only a half-hearted effort to tackle women's issues. Laws on dowries and female discrimination have been enacted, thanks to citizens' groups such as Jyoti's. But there's no real regulation or supervision, and mostly the problems remain unsolved. Jodi is trying to set up more counselling centres to help more women. At present, there are just 13 of them scattered across India. Every day, women who are suffering from domestic violence and other problems make their way in desperation to the centres. Six days a week, there are trained staff and volunteer lawyers on hand to offer them advice. Eighteen-year-old Lehana has been brought to the centre by her father, who could not bear to see her beaten so often by her husband, especially since she's now pregnant. The problem also involves a dispute over the dowry payment. My mother-in-law poured hot oil over me, and my entire face was badly burned. My husband beats me as well. He never goes against what his parents say. I went to the police, but they just reprimanded the husband's family and sent them home. That's why I came here. The people here promised they would help us. The counselor recommends that Lehana try to talk with her husband so they can reach a reconciliation. There have been 1,000 reports of abuse like this over the past five years. The counselor calls Lehana's husband and asks him to come to the center for an interview. He agrees to talk to them, but he doesn't show up on that day. Jyoti rarely gets home before 10 at night. She lives in a three-bedroom housing unit outside Mumbai together with her husband, who's a company employee, their son, who's at college, and her mother-in-law. Jodi has the support of all her family. Her husband and son even help with housework, which is very unusual for an Indian family. I don't mind helping. I don't worry about those traditional ideas about gender roles. My family is so supportive that I'm free to focus on my own activities. I try to back my wife up as much as I can. I think it's very important so that she can devote all her energy to her work and to the activities of her volunteer group. After repeated calls from the counsellor, Lehana's husband finally shows up at the centre. I swear to God I will never let my wife suffer again.
which went to your Sudanese. Yeah, I know it was wrong. I'm sorry. It looks promising. About three days later, the husband still hasn't appeared for the reconciliation procedures. Jody pours all her energy into her activities. Today, her troupe is performing out in the country. To save money, the troupe takes the local bus. It's a 10-hour ride from Mumbai. After walking for another hour, the troupe finally arrives at a farming village deep in the mountains. It's a grassroots approach, but the performances are often most effective in remote places like this. It's a tiny village with a population of just 200, and it's in a festive mood. The word has gone out and everyone has gathered to see the first theatre troupe ever to visit their village. The performance is titled, Oh No, It's a Girl. A woman is pregnant, and the mother-in-law makes it clear she doesn't want a granddaughter. But it does turn out to be a girl. The woman protests that it's not her fault. But her mother-in-law just tells her to shut up. In her song she asks, what am I going to do? It's a girl. My husband will be angry and my mother-in-law will be furious. The performance ends with a call for everyone to look forward to a new society in India without gender discrimination. The words of the closing song say Hindus, Muslims, Christians, let's all work together. You're not alone. Let's break free from these outdated practices. I thought it was wonderful. Violence towards women happens all the time. But I think this play will make people think twice about it. If I have to pay a dowry, I would rather not get married. The young men in the audience have never considered that they themselves are also responsible for discrimination. The play has given them plenty to think about. I've decided not to get married in the old way. One woman is so impressed by the play that she improvises a song. She sings, no other person is doing the kind of work that Jyoti is doing. If we hadn't met Jody, we would still be struggling in the dark. We're approaching the 21st century. It won't be easy to change the practice of discrimination against women because it has such a long history. But if people start to change their way of thinking, society will gradually become better. And that's why we must continue our work. Jodi is not letting up her efforts to improve the status of India's women, and her message and the passion she brings to it gives them both courage and hope. Mm -hmm.
India has a proverb that goes, raising a daughter is like watering someone else's lawn, which means that it's a waste to have daughters. Sexism is deeply rooted there. Of course, discrimination and abuse towards women are prohibited by law in India, but these laws are not being adhered to in reality. Jody hopes to solve this problem by promoting awareness among adults and educating children as well. Recently, some young men began supporting Jody's activities. That was our feature on India.